Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And right now, hundreds of servicemen and women traveling through San Antonio International Airport as they head home for the holidays. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi putting the impeachment process on hold. I'm Inez de la in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, not as cold as it has been the last couple of days. And kind of misty in the air. We're going to check in with Mike and get your forecast. Good morning. We made it to Friday, December 20th. Happy Friday, everybody. I saw tons of cars loaded to the brim, and you could tell they were heading out for Christmas. I believe it. Uh, it is feel much more humid out there this morning, and I guess the trend is going to be wetter all day long. Yeah. If you are hitting the road, uh, just obviously take your time because we will have some rain. There's a little bit of rain out there right now, and yeah, temperatures are almost almost twice what they were yesterday morning. Oh yeah, you can tell. So yeah, we got down to 27 yesterday. We're in the low 50s right now. And there's plenty of humidity, of course, and we do have those light little sprinkles. There's nothing showing up uh, uh, by the airport right now. And most of the reporting stations don't have, uh, haven't talked about any rain as of yet. We do have some on radar though. We're at 52 right now, 40s in the hill country. And uh, look at that, everybody is, again, almost double of what we were yesterday when most everybody was down in the low 30s and even 20s at this time and of course the humidity has definitely started to uh, come back up now as far as the uh, rain and boy I got a slow clicker going on here this morning come on there we go here's radar and as you can see we do have a lot of uh, light scattered rain most of it is down to the uh, south round uh, Catula Laredo and there is a disturbance coming on in here the majority of the rain today is going to be further to the kind of south and east although we will have some scattered showers off to the west and uh, that last hour Seguin was reporting just a little bit of light rain and again some of this most of the reporting stations aren't getting anything as of yet, but we will continue to have these light showers around here. And it looks like we've had a few maybe moving through town, so some of the roads are going to be damp. Just to assume that the roads are going to be damp this morning and pretty much throughout the day. It's not going to be raining constantly, but we will have those showers off and on throughout the day. Temperatures, we're in the low 50s right now, and thermometers really not going to be moving that much, if at all. Going for 55 maybe later on this afternoon with a few of those scattered showers. And that's going to be into this evening as well. Clouds tomorrow, then a great looking weekend. Christmas forecast is coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Seen any rain on Transguide at all, Nick? No, it's not looking too wet out there right now, Mike. It's probably there's no accidents either, so that's really good. We do have some construction on 35, um, which will probably affect your holiday uh, uh, traveling here today. Now let's take a look at uh, some drive times first, and I guess Mike Mike's doing the same thing right now. Well, let's see if we can go to Transguide. Let's see if that helps a little bit. Um, let's see. Yeah, I guess it's having clicker problems. To I think we're having, yeah, I think we're having some clicker problems. Let's go to the trans guy if you got me, Mike. Let's see. One more. Here's some drive times. Eastbound I-10 from FM 46 to 1604 is 38 minutes. And the northwest side of 1604 to IH-35 is 13 minutes. So if you're traveling for the holiday season, that's good right now. Now let's take a look right here. This is some of the construction I was talking about. This is 35 uh, South at 90 Knox Road. Uh, there's still com com some construction there. And then we have 35 at FM 306 in the city of New Braunfels. There's some construction there. So just be careful if you're traveling that way. Mark. Thank you, Nick. Right now you're looking live at San Antonio International Airport where hundreds of military men and women are now on leave from duty at Joint Base San Antonio, ready to celebrate the holidays. Look at all them sitting there at one of those gates. Local businesses and agencies are providing donations and volunteers are offering complimentary gift wrapping and snacks. And they can expect some long lines at security as personnel make their way home for the long deserved time off. So grateful for all of their service and happy they're heading home. It's got some sleepy eyes, but there are also some smiles in there. Aww. New this morning, firefighters are estimating $5,000 in damage to a home that caught fire on the east side. It happened just before 10 last night in the 800 block of Nevada Street, east of downtown. According to firefighters, they were able to get everyone out of the home safely, including two dogs. Firefighters say the cause of the blaze was from a water heater that caught fire. The family was not able to return to the home last night because utilities were not working. In your other morning headlines, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi putting the impeachment process on hold by threatening to possibly delay President Trump's Senate trial. President Trump and his allies are accusing Pelosi of playing games. Here's ABC's Inez de la Cuatera in Washington.
History put on hold. President Trump becoming just the third president in U.S. history to be impeached. But House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is now refusing to take the next steps, saying she won't send articles of impeachment over to the Senate until Majority Leader Mitch McConnell reveals what the president's trial will look like. Our founders, when they wrote the Constitution, uh, they suspected that there could be a rogue president. I don't think they suspected that we could have a rogue president and a rogue leader in the Senate at the same time. Democrats have been pushing to hear from four witnesses the White House had blocked from testifying, including acting chief of staff Mick Mulvaney and former national security advisor John Bolton. The issue coming up at last night's Democratic debate. If President Trump thinks that he should not be impeached, he should be not scared to put forward his own witnesses. But McConnell has already rejected that request, indicating he wants a speedy trial and that he's working in total coordination with the White House. Democrats are hoping threatening to possibly delay Trump's trial will give them leverage. But for now, at least, Republicans aren't biting. It looks like the prosecutors are getting cold feet in front of the entire country and second guessing whether they even want to go to trial. President Trump responding on Twitter, writing Pelosi is afraid to present impeachment to the Senate and adding, so after Democrats gave me no due process in the House, no lawyers, no witnesses, no nothing, they now want to tell the Senate how to run their trial. We think that what they did is unconstitutional. Lawmakers were hoping to have the Senate trial begin the week of January 6th, but that will all depend on Speaker Pelosi. And as like Guterra, ABC News, Washington. A new civil lawsuit was filed against Harvey Weinstein, alleging he sexually assaulted a 16-year-old girl in 2002. The victim says she met Weinstein in 2002 at a modeling event in New York. A few days later, she was contacted by Weinstein and invited to lunch. She says it was her understanding it was a business lunch to discuss her future and career. The victim says Weinstein's driver picked her up, and instead of going to lunch, she was taken to his apartment, where he allegedly sexually assaulted her. Disney, Miramax, and Weinstein's brother, Robert Weinstein, were all listed, also rather listed in the lawsuit. The Trump administration celebrating the launch of the U.S. Space Force, the first new military service in more than 70 years. It is officially authorized in the 2020 National Defense Bill that President Trump is signing into law today. U.S. Space Force has been a priority for the president, and to start off, it will have about 200 people and a budget of $40 million. Well, the federal government says the nation's homeless population has increased by 2.7 percent since January of this year. The Department of Housing and Urban Development says it was driven by a 16.4 percent increase in California alone. HUD Secretary Ben Carson says homelessness is at a crisis level in the state, although HUD found a decreased number of homeless veterans and families. We have some fantastic news on this Friday for you, Spurs fans. Silver and Black actually won a game last night against the Brooklyn Nets. Final score, 118-105. Spurs play the L.A. Clippers at 7.30 tomorrow night at the AT&T Center. Go Spurs, go. We'll be talking about that a little bit later on. It was a solid win, and it was in regular re regulation time. They didn't have to do overtime this time. Thank goodness. 438, 52 degrees. It's a topic that affects all of us in San Antonio. Increased property taxes. How much property taxes have risen in the city within the last five years? Coming up after the break. You have hard-boiled eggs in your fridge. Probably best to throw them away. The CDC warning there's a listeria outbreak. We'll tell you which egg company to look out for next. And live cam giving us a look outside. Not a very pretty Friday, but boy, we're going to have a beautiful Saturday and Sunday. My cash forecast coming up. Good morning and welcome back. A consumer warning you should know about today. A listeria outbreak linked to certain hard-boiled eggs. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention issued, issued rather a nationwide alert as it continues to investigate a number of illnesses and one death in Texas. 12 on your side to Marilyn Moritz with a consumer warning. The CDC is warning about hard-boiled eggs sold in bulk to food service operators. They're produced by Allmark Foods of Georgia. The worry is listeria. One Texan has died. Four more people have been hospitalized. There is no recall, but restaurants and stores are advised not to use them. And because the eggs are used in ready-to-eat foods, consumers cannot tell if products contain these eggs. The CDC is investigating. 
31,000 dressers are recalled because they are unstable and can tip over if not anchored to the wall, a deadly danger to children. These are Hillsdale Furniture's Chadwick and Bailey models, five-drawer chess. Contact the company for a repair or a refund. Before you fire up the grill, Bass Pro is recalling thousands of Mr. Steak gas grills after nine reported fires. The recall involves certain four and five burner models sold from May 2017 through July 2019. Stop using it and contact Mr. Steak for a repair. We have more information on all of these products on KSET.com. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Also on our website, an increase in property taxes has raised complaints by people all over the city. Property taxes up 8.7% here in Bear County. We've broken down each step of the process online, from the basics of property taxes to where the money actually goes, and read about it all on KSAT. Dot com. 443, a warmer 52 degrees. Singer Mark Anthony's luxury yacht sank in Miami after it caught fire. How many firefighters it took to put out the flames? Still ahead. With well, a fortune host, Pat Sajak, speaking out for the first time about his recent health scare, how he's describing his experience in the hospital coming up next. Welcome back. It is now 446. ABC's Paula Ferris sits down with Pat Sajak about his recent health scare in today's GMA First Look. I'm Paula Ferris in Orlando for Good Morning America, and I just wrapped up an exclusive interview with Pat Sajak, the beloved TV game show host. He talks about his recent health scare, that emergency surgery, what's next for him health-wise, and Vanna filling in for him on Wheel of Fortune. Here's your GMA First Look. You said they had to operate right away. Was it life or death at that moment? Well, they tell, I mean, my blood pressure had, f had fallen dramatically. They had to wait till it, till it lifted a bit so they could do the surgery. Uh, yeah, I mean, no one knew. It was tough on the, uh, Leslie, my, my, my wife and, and our daughter was with me and they were, you know, they didn't know. I mean, you go in and they don't know if I'm coming out. It's intense, uh, it's debilitating, I mean, you can't move. And coming up at 7, we'll have more of our exclusive interview with Pat Sajak and what's next for Wheel of Fortune. With your GMA First Look, I'm Paula Ferris in Orlando. Right now it's 447. Let's check on the roadways, find out how it's looking on this Friday morning. Nick? Hey, Leslie. Hey, Mark. Yeah, the, no, uh, no uh, accidents yet on the roadways, and it's not too slick yet, so that's really good. However, we did have reports of a pedestrian walking on the main lanes of 410 and San Pedro Avenue. Still looking at that to see if, uh, if in fact, that is true or not. But uh, just in case, if you're heading that way, be careful. There could be a pedestrian walking on those main lanes. Now, let's take a look at some uh, drive times. Eastbound Highway 151 to 1604 to Highway 90 is 9 minutes, and eastbound Highway 90 to 16 to 4 to 35 is 12 minutes. So that's looking like a very good commute right now if you're out for the holidays. Uh, let's take a look at construction 35 and FM 306. It looks like it may have uh, been uh, the construction's gone, but 35 South at Knox Road, there still is construction there on the south side on 35 and 90. So just be careful if you're heading that way. Taking a look at other places in the city, 281 of the quarry looking very good right now. And uh, 90 and 36 on the west side is looking great. So just uh, if it does start raining, the roads are slick. Please be careful driving, and I hope you get to your destination safe for your holiday traveling. Oh, of the four of us, who saw mist on the windshield coming in this morning? Nothing. Right? No, saw no. Just, just a smidge. I could feel it. You no, could feel it yeah, on your face. Yeah, it was yeah. kind of walking, but I didn't mm -hmm. have to use my windshield wipers. You can, yeah. I mean, the humidity is definitely up. Temperatures, like I said, are almost double of what they were at this time yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, and if you are planning on doing some driving, uh, it's going to be drier going north and going west. So like going 35 north or going 10 out toward the hill country, but then heading east, south, or, or down to the uh, southwest, it's a little bit wetter. So. Be careful. Yes, and watch it around town this morning because a lot of folks still have to go to work, have to go to school before the uh, Christmas break kicks in, and we're going to have some damp roads. Might already be a little bit damp in places, like Mark said, he saw uh, some, some mist out there. There's the rain primarily in our southern counties as of right now. It is all sliding off to the northeast and got some around uh, well, Pleasanton area, Pearsall, scattered out in western portions of the hill country. And here in town, it looks like we may have had a couple of sprinkles going by. Some may have not reached 
the ground, it may have evaporated, but the atmosphere is going to continue to moisten up and it's going to the moisture is going to continue to pump on in here. And so therefore, yes, it will be reaching the ground and it's uh, just going to be kind of a, a wettish day. We're not going to have showers constantly, but they're going to be sticking around throughout the rest of today and most of tonight. So temperatures are in the 40s and 50s right now, as opposed to the low 30s and even mid 20s that we had yesterday. And that's the situation all around, except in far northwest portions of the hill country. And of course, the humidity has come back up. Think yesterday, these numbers, we had single digits in portions of the hill country with these dew point temperatures. So the humidity, as expected, has come back into the picture. Mountain cedar is still low mold is probably going to be going up. Oh, uh, the nice thing with mountain cedar, we don't have any big northerly wind shifts or anything like that. No strong northerly winds coming on in here. Here's the, the uh, rapid update computer model. And it's got the rain around the area throughout the rest of the morning. Now it's not going to be raining constantly, but there's just going to be off and on. And again, if you are going to be heading down to the south, southwest, to the east. That's where the majority of the rain is going to be. You'll still run into some if you're going up 35 or heading out toward the hill country, but there's going to be lesser rain out in that direction throughout the, the rest of today. And this is going to continue through the afternoon hours. There could be a couple of moderate showers scattered about in here. More uh, showers, especially from about 35 east throughout the evening hours and even a couple of leftovers tomorrow off to the east and then things are going to start to clear on out. So we have uh, clouds to start off tomorrow. Then we're going to be seeing the uh, sunshine come back in here and after the few clouds tomorrow morning, it's going to be just a fantastic weekend. Cool mornings, pleasant afternoons. This disturbance is coming in here obviously from uh, from the south coming cutting across Mexico and that's why most of it is confined to the eastern or going to be confined in our eastern counties here and after that that's what's in store like I said for the rest of the weekend lots of clear skies and then we'll have some clouds moving back in toward the middle part of next week so 51 degrees today at noon I know we're at 52 right now so basically we're just going to stay in the low 50s all day long is the best way to describe it with uh, some scattered showers around throughout the rest of the day and we'll stay again in the 50s and tomorrow we start off in the 40s so we will be cooling off a little bit and then getting up to 63 by the afternoon. We're going to have clouds starting off tomorrow morning. Sunday looks spectacular as well. 66 after a cool start and then a few more clouds Monday, more clouds as we go on in through Christmas and temperatures are going to start to come up. So we're going to be right around 70 not only Christmas Eve, but uh, Christmas Day, and then a couple of showers perhaps on the 26th. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. 452, 52 degrees. A new action film, 1917, will be hitting theaters on Christmas Day. How the actors are describing the World War I film after the break. Looks remarkable. Right now, let's take a look at your lottery numbers. Pick three, two, six, two, Fireball 7, Daily 4, 9, 4, 4, 8, Fireball 9. And your cash five number, 7, 10, 19, 24, 32. And text two step 12, 27, 31, 35 with a bonus ball of 18. This SA Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Broadway Bank. Hi, I'm Scott Hopkins, prior Air Force Captain, and now proud to be a part of Broadway Bank. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of our men and women around the world for serving and all that you do. Thank you. Welcome back. It is now 4.55. Model and actress Kara, I think it's Delavine, 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 had an unwanted guest scene climbing a wall at her home in California. ABC's Daria Olvinger has the latest on what's happening in Hollywood. The stars of Sam Mendes' new action film 1917, which features one single shot over the course of its two-hour running time, say the intimacy of the film helps personalize the massive loss of life and the horrors of World War I. It's not just a war film, it's much more than that. There's a lot of different themes running through the film that people can connect with, and I think it'll, I think it'll be an eye-opener to, you know, to, as well, I mean, the younger generation as well that don't know a lot about the First World War. 1917 opens in theaters on Christmas Day. A luxury yacht owned by singer Mark Anthony sank off the coast of Miami Wednesday after it was engulfed in a massive fire. It took 45 firefighters nearly two hours to extinguish the flames. Luckily, no one was injured by the blaze. A man was arrested after being spotted climbing up a wall at the home of actresses Cara Delevingne and Ashley Benson. Delevingne stars in the Amazon original series Carnival Row. Benson is best known for her role on Pretty Little Liars. And happy birthday to Jonah Hill. The super bad star is turning 36. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. Daria Albinger, ABC News, New York. Well, that would be a little scary. Some man climbing on the wall. What the?
No kidding. About three till right now, 52 degrees. Lots more to come on Good Morning San Antonio. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Police continue to investigate a string of robberies that happened across San Antonio earlier this month. Now one person is facing charges in connection with those crimes. How robbery detectives caught the suspect is one of our top stories. The search is on for whoever fired over a dozen shots at a Southside home, what police found at the scene when they were investigating last night. And outside with live cam on your early, early Friday morning, it's cool but not quite cold, and Mike is already tracking some showers on a radar. Good morning to you. It is Friday. It's December 20th. Thanks for being with us this morning. You're going to certainly notice the difference in the weather when you step outside today and you might need a little umbrella with you. Right, Mike? Yeah, it's not a bad idea and it's also sort of that dampish cool. You know, yesterday we were down in the 20s around here. Coldest morning of the season yesterday, 27 degrees. Coldest morning in uh, 2019 and temperatures are almost double of what they were, but you got all that humidity. So it, it is kind of a, a dampish cool and temperatures. Everybody is now in the upper 40s and low 50s and and the other big point is dew points. Remember yesterday we were down in the uh Kind of teens and even single digits for dew points. Now we're back up to 43, and that humidity obviously is feeding some of those showers. And this is what it looks like on radar as of right now, with uh, basically light rain, a couple of moderate showers, as you can see, that are sliding to the well, about to the northeast down there around Laredo and just to the east of Catula. And all this light rain will continue to work its way off to the northeast. The majority of the rain today, now there will be kind of scattered showers around, but the majority of the rain is going to be south and east of I-35. That's the the best opportunity to see some of these showers. A couple of them scattered around around Bandera, heading up toward Kerrville. We have had a couple little uh, spots showing up on radar moving through town, but there's also a lot that's too light to be picked up on radar. Just uh, some light little some mist out there, so the roads could be damp. Just to kind of assume that throughout the rest of today that the roads are going to be damp, or the rest of the morning commute, I should say, roads are going to be damp. And again, these temperatures, everybody is in the uh, 40s and 50s right now, and a lot of humidity, and we're going to keep these steady temperatures around. Thermometer's not going to move all that much throughout the day. And then tomorrow, some leftover cloud. We'll have showers, by the way, all the way through today, as well as tonight, and then uh, some morning clouds tomorrow. Beautiful weekend, cool mornings, pleasant afternoons, plenty of sunshine. Heading in toward Christmas, it's going to warm up a little bit. We're going to be around 70 with a lot of clouds around on Christmas. All the details for the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Anything going on, Nick? Hey, Mike, no, right now, no, nothing's going on. No accidents out there, so that's always good news here for a Friday morning. Well, I hope everyone's having a great morning out there, and uh, if you got an early start to your holiday weekend, please be careful because the roadways are starting to get a little slick right now. We've got a lot of green on the map, so that's good. Let's do some drive times. Northbound 410 to Highway 90 to I-10, 10 minutes, and westbound from IH-35 to IH-10, 15 minutes. And let's see what we have here. Helotus to Randolph, 27 minutes, and back Randolph to Helotus, 27 minutes. That's a good drive right there, but it should go by pretty smooth because there's no traffic in the area. Taking a look at Transguide, we still have the construction on 35 at Knox Road. That's near the 35 and 90 intersection. Uh, that, usually that construction is out of there by 536, so hopefully we'll shoot for that today. Well, I hope everyone's having a great morning. Mark. Thank you, Nick. Top stories this morning. A man ended up in handcuffs after San Antonio police say he was involved in a series of robberies. Police arrested Nathaniel Talley late yesterday at an apartment complex on the northwest side. Officers say when they attempted to arrest him, he took off on foot. He's being charged with two counts of aggravated robbery, evading and unlawful carrying of weapon. Police say they're investigating whether other suspects were involved in those robberies. They all took place between December 10th through the 11th. Well, this morning, police are trying to figure out who's behind a drive-by shooting on the south side. It happened at a home off Oriental Avenue just before 8 last night. When police arrived, they found a 27-year-old man shot in the hand and a dead dog. Police say around 10 to 15 shots were fired at the home. They believe it was a targeted shooting. They're still working to identify the shooter's vehicle. If you have any information, please contact police. Some last-minute legal maneuvering brought an aggravated sexual assault trial of Alan Arredondo Bratton to an abrupt end and revealed some additional charges against him. He was found guilty on the assault charges on Wednesday. Yesterday, as part of a plea agreement, he was sentenced to 35 years in prison. Paul Venema takes us through the process that led to the deal. Is that your understanding of the agreement you have on sentencing? Yes, you are. 
As the punishment phase was beginning, Alan Adedondos Bratton's lawyer announced that there was a plea agreement and that he'd changed his mind. He asked that the judge, rather than the jury, assess his punishment. I assess your punishment at 35 years in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. There's a $1,500 fine. I'm going to make an affirmative finding that there is a deadly weapon used in the commission of the offense. <laughs> that deadly weapon was a pistol that Brayton waved in her face as he sexually assaulted his 25-year-old girlfriend on December 4th, 2017, an assault that he recorded on his cell phone. It was the centerpiece of the state's case, and it also provided evidence of more than just the attack. His cell phone contained 32 images of child pornography. Those charges were dismissed as part of the plea deal, but included in Brayton's sentence. The record is closed, your excuse. As he left the courtroom, Brayton gestured to his family and smiled. Before prosecutors accepted that plea deal, they discussed it with the victim. She agreed, and they went forward. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. Raging bushfires continue to scorch parts of Australia. Two volunteer firefighters battling the blazes died Thursday in a highway accident. Officials believe their vehicle hit a tree, then rolled off the roadway. Comes a severe drought, record-breaking temperatures, and high winds have fueled dozens of fires in the state of New South Wales in southeastern Australia. A state of emergency in effect through at least Christmas Day. The FDA just approved a vaccine to prevent Ebola. This is the first time ever in the United States. The vaccine is called Evibo, or Vibo, I should say. Pharmaceutical giant Merck designed it. Ebola cases in the U.S. are rare, typically involving healthcare workers treating the infected or infected people traveling into the country. One strain of the deadly virus has killed upwards of 2,000 people in the current outbreak in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Deaths in the 2014 outbreak in West Africa surpassed 11,000. U.S. House has voted to advance President Trump's revised version of the North American Free Trade Agreement. Legislation passed with an overwhelmingly bipartisan vote Thursday. The deal, for the most part, keeps NAFTA intact, but it addresses digital trade while giving some assistance to the dairy market and auto industry. Congressional Democrats also push for additional labor standards. The bill now moves to the Senate, where a vote is expected early next year. Seven minutes past the hour, 52 degrees. A new business proposal could create more opportunities for entrepreneurs in our area, where a new food truck park is set to open. Military service members heading out, leaving Joint Base San Antonio for the holidays. We'll tell you what they're most excited about this morning. And taking a look outside once again with live cam. Not a pretty Friday, but that's all right, because it's Friday. We're so happy to have you with us. We'll be back. A San Antonio business entrepreneur is hoping to create opportunities for other small business owners and artists in an up-and-coming part of north of North downtown. Ricardo Ortiz is gearing up to open 88 social food truck park and bar along Avenue B and 10th Street next spring. It's a business dream he and his brother have been planning their entire lives. The park can accommodate five food trucks and two modular storage containers will be turned into usable space for a bar, restrooms and storage space. The park is next to the Riverwalk in an area where retail, offices, and living spaces are currently being constructed. It's on the Riverwalk. You're already in an area where that has high tourism. So I think it's a, it's a good fit, you know, just for the neighborhood, just to be able to, you know, um, to have some space for the arts and also, you know, kind of make it a destination for people to stop by and see how creative San Antonio can be. His brother, Armando Artis, was a big inspiration in the planning of the business endeavor. He was killed by a wrong way driver nearly three years ago. The name of the business pays, pays homage to his memory. Artis hopes to have the park open by the spring. Well, thousands of soldiers bright and are up bright and early this morning, making their way home for the holidays. So they're probably tired, but very excited. Right now, you're looking live at one of the gates at San Antonio International Airport. This group of soldiers training at U.S. Army Medical Center of Excellence, stationed at Joint Base San Antonio. Lots of them hanging out, but ready to be home, get some of that home cooking, and probably more importantly, take a good nap. I am beyond excited. Like, I haven't seen them in so long. Um, and just to, not just to get to see family again, but just to see, like, environment that we grew up in and, like, friends as well and stuff. So it's, like, a refresher. 
these uh, personnel making their trips home as part of the annual holiday block leave. If you get a second, say hello, maybe thank you, buy them a cup of coffee, or maybe even breakfast this morning. Happy holidays and safe travels. Merry Christmas. 512, 52 degrees. A breach of Facebook leaves many users' information exposed. How many people are affected just ahead? These are real people, not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema, or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. That's a difference you can feel. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within. And talk to your eczema specialist about to fix it. 516, a new study finds racial and gender bias in facial recognition software. ABC's Kenneth Moten and Janae Norman have more in Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, racial bias in facial recognition software. Researchers say the most popular algorithms misidentify minorities far more often than whites. Researchers think the bias may be related to the images used to train the software. A massive data breach left millions of Facebook users' data exposed online. Names, IDs, and phone numbers, and other sensitive information was available without a password. More than 257 million people may have been impacted. Facebook says it's looking into the issue. And the Senate has given final approval to a bill designed to curb those annoying robocalls. It's called the Traced Act, and it requires phone companies to authenticate calls to determine if a number calling is actually real. It also clears the way for regulators to penalize scammers more aggressively. Amen. Those are your tech fights. Have a great day. Let's get updated on time saver traffic. Nick, what's happening on the roadways? Not much right now, Leslie. Everything's looking good right now, so that's always good to know, especially on a Friday morning. Uh, we do have some drive times, though. Let's see. Eastbound Bandera to I-10, five minutes, and westbound Bandera Road to 151 is also five minutes. Uh, let's see what else. We have the northeast side of 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes, and the southwest side of 1604 to downtown is also 12 minutes. So that's looking like a very good commute there. Looking outside at Trans Guide, let's take a look at that construction on 35 and Knox Road. It's still there right now. It looks like they have a uh, three lanes closed there on that access road. So just uh, be very careful when you're heading that way. Let's take a look at other sides of the city. IH 35 and New Braunfels Avenue is looking very smooth right now. US 90 and 36 is also looking great. And uh, 10 and Callahan is very, very light traffic. Uh, so that's very good for everybody who's traveling for the holiday season. And it, the, the, the roadway exodus begins Today. It's already started. I, on my way in, I saw a lot of cars loaded down. You're going to have to take it easy because we do have uh, some rain in the area and the roads are going to be damp pretty much all day long. Uh, most of the rain is going to be south and east. So if you're going, you know, 10 that direction, head down to the coast, down 35 to the south. Now, uh, heading out toward the hill country or uh, north, Probably not as much, but, uh, but still, if the roads could even a little bit slick, you just need to be careful. Exactly. And temperatures, nice thing is it's not that cold this morning. We do obviously have plenty of clouds out there, a whole different uh, weather than what we had the past uh, couple of mornings. And here's what it looks like on radar right now. We've got some of these uh, showers hanging around here, and as you can see, we've had a couple of them in town. 53 at Port SA, 51 out there at the airport, and uh, the humidity obviously has come back up. Mountain Cedar is on the low side, and it's probably going to be staying on the low side, just given the fact that we don't have any big, strong northerly winds coming on in here. Mold 
I would venture a guess, is going to be coming up, given the fact that we do have some of these uh, showers around here. This is what it looks like on the computer model, and it's got light scattered showers around throughout most of the day. And yes, there are some north and, and up to the northwest, but the majority of this rain is going to be down to the south and to the uh, southeast. There's a disturbance which is coming in here across Mexico, and that's going to be sliding up so the San Antonio and places off to the northwest hill country are going to be kind of on the uh, northwestern edge of this and it's not going to be raining constantly throughout the day, but we'll just have that chance for rain not only throughout the afternoon, but also on into uh, this evening as well as tonight. Even a couple of, you know, you can't rule out a decent shower here and there. It's not going to be a big overall big rain event, unfortunately, because we could desperately, desperately use some of that good rain. We'll have some leftover uh, clouds around. I don't think we'll see any showers left over tomorrow morning. But uh, except well off to the east and then we're going to continue to clear out throughout the day tomorrow and we're setting up for a fantastic looking weekend. So once again, here's the disturbance which is coming on in here uh, from Mexico and across from the uh, Pacific Ocean. And so that will ride up and stay basically to the east of town. That's where the majority of the rain is. It's also in association with this trough that's sort of moving on through here. The heart of that is staying up there to the north of us and that keeps the rain around today. Then we get on the back side of it. That's going to clear us out for the weekend. Temperatures will eventually start a warm up. We'll have some cool mornings this weekend and then nice afternoons right around, say, low mid 60s. Then the warm up continues going into the first part of next week and heading in toward Christmas Eve as well as Christmas Day. And temperatures are going to be up into the about 70 degree range. So we are going to be on the above normal side going into Christmas as well as the few days after that. And it's going to be staying kind of mild ish. Uh, another trough another wave is going to try and move on in here that's going to increase the uh, humidity and that's going to help out with cloud cover showers probably will hold off until about thursday of next week 53 degrees today at noon speaking of showers we're going to have some showers just scattered about throughout the rest of today as well as this evening 55 so basically temperatures aren't going to be moving kind of that dampish chill out there even though we're nowhere near as cold as the past couple of mornings Tomorrow we start off at 42 and we'll have some clouds, especially in the morning, and then we're going to be uh, clearing out in the afternoon. Uh, winter officially begins the winter solstice, which is technically the shortest day of the year is going to be uh, just after 10 o'clock tomorrow night. And then, of course, Hanukkah begins at sunset on Sunday and Christmas Eve, Tuesday, 70 degrees for high temperature. 70 on Christmas Day as well. Maybe a couple of showers there by Thursday. So once again, if you are, I mean, if you hadn't worked in school today, take it easy. Or if you're hitting the road, take it easy. I, don't, I mentioned yesterday it's mild on Christmas, but that's good for the kiddos who get bicycles and that kind of stuff. They can go outside and play. That's true. So good point. Go. 522, 51 degrees. Denseltown Magic can make almost anything happen. But what about snow in Los Angeles? We have that and more coming up in the spotlight. Pick three numbers, 262, Fireball 7. And your daily four numbers, 9448, Fireball 9. Cash five numbers, 710, 19, 24, 32. Texas two step, 12, 27, 31, 35. And the bonus ball there is 18. Right now it is 525. Katy Perry brings snow to a boys and girls club. And Kristen Bell is set to be honored. And a look at director Christopher Nolan's latest film. Here's CNN's David Daniel with those stories and more in your morning spotlight. One, two, three! Kids at a Los Angeles Boys and Girls Club got a holiday surprise from Katy Perry and Amazon, who turned their clubhouse into a winter wonderland, complete with snow. The club received essential items from its Amazon Smile charity list, and the kids got holiday gifts, plus photos with Santa, cookie decorating, and of course, sledding. Kristen Bell is guaranteed a prize at this year's Critics' Choice Awards. She'll be the fourth recipient of the See Her Award for her work towards more authentic portrayals of women in entertainment media. Bell will be honored at the 25th Critics' Choice Awards, January 12th in Santa Monica, California. All I have for you is a word. Tell it. It'll open the right doors. Some of the wrong ones, too. 
Here's your first look at John David Washington in Tenet, the next mind-bending adventure from Inception filmmaker Christopher Nolan, in which time moves in more than one direction. Tenet hits theaters July 17th, at least in our time. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has removed the fictional nation of Wakanda from its list of U.S. trading partners. This comes after someone noticed the nation from the Black Panther comics movie and movie was listed as a free trade agreement partner. The USDA says Wakanda was added for testing the tracker and should have been removed after testing was completed. The agency tweeted, while we remove the kingdom of Wakanda from our list of U.S. free trade partners, our relationship will always be strong. Hashtag Wakanda forever. Well, at least they had some fun with it there, too. That's hilarious. It's 527, 51 degrees. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. We'll be right back. Good morning at TGIF. It is Friday, December 20th. Thanks for being with us this morning. There's a little bit of drizzle and rain in our area, so that could be affecting traffic. Not just yet, Leslie, and that's good to know because uh, right now traffic is very light and the roadways look great. That's we've, good. We've already got some stuff showing up on radar. And besides the stuff that shows up, you said you ran into a little bit of mist? Just a little, as okay. you would say, a little spritz, like a like the, a white wine spritzer. The spits and drizzles, <laughs> like she likes to uh. talk about. Um, yeah, there, there may be a little bit of mist out there this morning, and we do have some of those uh, showers. Now, temperatures are a whole lot different than the past couple of mornings. We're almost double of where we have been. We're going to be right around, call it 50, low 50s throughout the rest of the morning and basically not moving throughout the day. So it is kind of that, even though it's not as cold, it's that dampish cool because yeah. you got more humidity out there. And we'll have some showers around throughout the afternoon. It's not going to rain constantly, but uh, just uh, scattered about here and there and even on into tonight. This is what it looks like out there by the airport. And it looks like the road is fairly dry. That's the way it appears as of right now. We do have uh, a lot of rain right now showing up and some decent downpours down there, down around just to the uh, east of Laredo, and all this is sliding off to the northeast. This is where to the southeast of 35, where the majority rain, when it's all said and done, the majority of rain is going to be falling. Now, this won't be a huge rain event. There will be pockets of some moderate showers scattered about, but uh, it's not going to be a widespread big rain event. Yes, there are obviously some showers out in portions of the hill country, but again, the, the lion's share is going to be to the uh, south and east. And still we haven't seen a Bandera, Hondo, Kerrville going up 10. You're going to run into uh, some of these showers. We still haven't seen a lot, maybe a couple moving through town here. That's about it as of right now. But we will see more throughout the rest of the morning as well as this afternoon. And temperatures, we're back down to 51 degrees. And we were at 27 at this time yesterday, so almost double of where we were yesterday. 40s in the hill country, and that's going to be the way it stays. Steady temperatures all day long. Now, cool mornings this weekend, beautiful. I have some clouds left over tomorrow, and then and sunshine 60s in the afternoon and then going into next week more clouds especially tuesday christmas eve and christmas day and temperature is going to be kind of on the warm side right around 70. all the details coming up in a couple of minutes time saver traffic right now so you haven't seen any really wet spots on the roads no mike no wet spots trans guy looks good right now but as it does start to get more wet on the roadways please be careful everyone especially if you're traveling for the holidays uh, look a lot of green out there that's always a good sign huh a lot of green that's great uh, let's take a look at some drive times. Eastbound Bandera to I-10, five minutes, and westbound Bandera Road to Highway 151 is five minutes. So, well, traffic is still relatively light right now. Taking a look outside at the Trans Guide, 281 at the quarry is looking great. Uh, doesn't look very wet in the roadways right now, um, so that's always good. And it looks like traffic is very light. 35 and uh, 37 in Pecan Valley, same. Looks great, but maybe there is starting to be a little bit of, you know, of a mist in the air. So just be careful now if you are heading out. Mark, Leslie, back to you. Thanks, Nick. New this morning, firefighters estimating $5,000 in damage to a home that caught fire on the east side. It happened just before 10 last night in the 800 block of Nevada Street, east of downtown. According to firefighters, they were able to get everyone out of the home safely, including two dogs. Firefighters say the cause of the blaze was a water heater that caught fire. The family was not able to return to the home last night because utilities were not working. Seven presidential hopefuls hit the stage for the sixth Democratic primary debate in Los Angeles. The debate coming just a day after the House voted to impeach President Trump, a topic that was at the top of last night's agenda. ABC's Elena Gomez has more. The last Democratic primary debate of the year began as predicted. We need to restore the integrity 
of the presidency, of the office of the presidency. Reacting to President Trump's impeachment coming just one day before. If the president claims uh, that he is so innocent, then why doesn't he have all the president's men testify? But candidates quickly returning to those hot button issues they're hearing on the campaign trail, like the economy. Yes, where I live, folks aren't measuring the economy by how the Dow Jones is looking, they're measuring the economy by how they're doing. We've got a government that works great for those with money and doesn't work for much of anyone else. Climate change. The issue now is whether we save the planet for our children and our grandchildren. And America's role on the world stage. We see among our allies and among our adversaries, case after case, where the world is making plans on what to do, ignoring the United States because we're no longer considered reliable. And for Democrats, Thursday night was also about diversity. Seven candidates representing two women. Senator Warren, you would be the oldest president ever inaugurated. I'd like you to weigh in as well. Uh, I'd also be the youngest woman ever inaugurated. <laughs> and only one candidate of color, Andrew Yang. Why am I the lone candidate of color on this stage? You know what you need to donate to political campaigns? Disposable income. Yet all in agreement, their primary target remains the man currently man occupying the Oval Office. And that was ABC's Elena Gomez reporting. Only seven of the 15 remaining Democratic candidates qualified for last night's debate. Several of the candidates offstage are now putting pressure on the Democratic National Committee to once again try to modify restrictions for future debates. At the day ahead, President Trump is expected to sign a spending package before heading to Palm Beach, Florida for winter vacation. Passing the $1.4 trillion spending package will avoid a possible government shutdown. Included in the package, funding for a southern border fence, new social programs, and raising the cigarette purchase age to 21. And Boeing is set to launch its new Starliner crew capsule into space for the first time this morning. This is a live look at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. Starliner has headed to the International, is headed to the International Space Station. On board is a test dummy named Rosie the Rocketeer. It was made to look like the iconic Rosie the Riveter. The test flight is Boeing's last hurdle before flying astronauts next year. And that launch is scheduled to take place at just about any moment. It looks like the uh, umbilicals are still attached to the, oh, the countdown oh, is underway. Oh, let, yeah. One. And lift off the rise of Starliner and a new era in human spaceflight. The tower. Now 10 seconds into flight. People speak on the pitch over program. And there she goes. Uh, we timed that just right. Rocky the Rocketeer. That's right. Starliner is now outbound for the ISS. Again, you're looking live. pre dawn skies over Cape Canaveral right now. The Starliner begins its roll, headed to orbit. More on that coming up throughout the morning. Well, high-tech cameras that are supposed to give you a peace of mind, uh, rather peace of mind, have some folks worried about privacy. Comes after several people reported their ring security systems were hacked. CNN's John Lawrence reports. Hackers strike once again. Hello, is someone here? Can you hear me? A stranger accesses a Virginia family's ring home security system. The man then speaks to the family's nanny, who came downstairs after hearing his voice. Why is it all open? I'm in your house now. The hacker's voice came from one of the ring cameras inside the house. If they are actually hacking our system, the system is registered to our address, so they would have our home address. And this isn't an isolated incident. Get up. I got treats. Get up. Other households had their ring systems hacked, including this one in Washington state. That? I'm your best friend. I'm Santa Claus. The family, who wanted to remain anonymous, contacted Ring for an explanation. It was accessed by a third party. Um, they used a mobile device. They just told me that uh, I could have had a lax password and that they could have guessed my password. The company recently issued a statement saying that they've investigated the issue and have no evidence of an unauthorized intrusion or compromise of Ring's systems or network. Ring also advises its users to enable two-factor authentication add shared users, and use different and strong passwords. I'm John Lawrence reporting. 
Friday morning, it's exactly 539, 51 degrees. Spurs were able to beat the Nets. How they were able to rally and overcome a 14-point deficit. Well, the sun, as we just saw, was not quite up over Cape Canaveral, neither San Antonio, as you're looking back towards downtown. Last full weekend before the Christmas holiday. Mike's forecast coming up, and we're going to check back in with Nick. This SA Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Broadway Bank. Hi, I'm Sergeant McCauley, deployed to Afghanistan. I'd like to give a shout out to my son Bryce in San Antonio, Texas, my dad George in Tucson, Arizona. Wishing you guys both a happy holidays and a Merry Christmas. Love you. Be home soon. Welcome back, everybody. It's 542. In the day ahead, Roy Moss Youth Alternatives is looking for a little help with gift wrapping. The nonprofit is asking wrapping supplies for wrapping supplies and help wrapping gifts for kids living in the Roy Moss Residential and Emergency Shelter. If you can help them out, they will be at the Roy Moss Youth Alternatives Burdick Community Center in Bernie from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. They intend to keep working until all gifts are wrapped. The San Antonio Spurs came to play last night, defeating the Brooklyn Nets. Spurs rally from a 14-point deficit to beat Brooklyn. Patty Mills had 27 of those points, and most came in the second half. LaMarcus Aldridge added 20 points and 10 rebounds for San Antonio. Brooklyn was down three players, including point guard Kyrie Irving. Spencer Dinwiddie tried to cover by shooting 14 of 29 from the field, eclipsing his career high by two points, but it was not enough. The Silver Black take this one, 118-105. Let's hear from Patty Mills. A mindset thing, you know, for me, trying to um, just be aggressive and, and, and being in that attack mode, I think. I think it, it can take pressure off, you know, uh, LaMarcus and, and, uh, and DeMar. So, um, you know, I do play with a lot of emotion, a lot of uh, positive vibes. So um, it, it comes out of me from time to time. Spurs are back in action at the AT&T Center tomorrow night where they host the L.A. Clippers at 730. 543, 51 degrees. Here's what's coming up. Well, if you are in the market for a new little kitty, how gorgeous is this one? You're going to don't bite the microphone. Then. <laughs> You're going to meet her coming up on Good Morning San Antonio. Cat time as we head into Christmas. Beth's here from the Animal Defense League and perfect description of the cat. Yes, this is Maze. Um, she is, you know, super playful and regular kitty naughtiness, but really affectionate. <laughs> affectionate, but just kind of a, a ham. Which is, that's, that's the perfect description for a kitten. Yes, and for sure. Gorgeous as can be. And I don't know if you can hear it, but her motor is just going. Yeah. And you have got the most beautiful kind of greenish greenish gold eyes sort yeah of. she's uh she's kind of the perfect reminder for uh what we see this time of year we see a lot of people coming in for uh, baby animals for christmas but uh just like this she's a good example that you know sometimes baby animals are a handful and it's important to remember that when you get a baby animal it's for a lifetime right and you know they're they may have little accidents here and there and they may get into trouble mm -hmm. so just just be ready for it so yeah, what y'all got going on yeah uh so we we have a lot of uh babies but we also have a lot of adults so anybody who doesn't want to you know take on all of this for Christmas time and do um, gifts of baby animals which like I said is is a baby animal at Christmas but it's an animal forever so um, if, if this is not something that you're prepared for you're not ready to take on all the responsibilities of a baby we have lots and lots of adult animals that that need plenty of love <laughs> yes, indeed. so just head on out there to the uh, Animal Defense League 1100 Nacogdoches or the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo and check out all the adults and some of the babies these two, like Lil Mays, 655-1481 is the number to call. Thank you, dear. Merry Christmas. You too. And also, if you're... Th we do little kitty was crying. We do. Do. Oh, get me out of here. Meow. Uh, if you're thinking about a uh, little extra gift giving, uh, they also have their Amazon wish list. Oh, that's uh, a good thing to know. Makes it easy, and that way you get exactly what they want, you know, whether it's water bowls or something like that. You get a couple of clicks and goes right to them. Do you have any pets? No, I do not. I haven't you had some? a pet. Yeah, I, was gonna say. <laughs> I had too much responsibility right now with the two little ones. That's 
Absolutely. When they get older, we're getting into dogs. Oh, good. Hey, while they're little, they can really get into, you know, you can teach them right about taking care of pets. So, we've got a cat and a dog if you want to, you know. No, no, you have to keep your, sorry. Oh, you're looking for, <laughs> nice try, though. for dog sitting? Or as you say, what, hamster sitting? What do you call your dog? What do you call your dog? A guinea pig. Guinea pig, yes. yes. Glorified guinea, guinea pig. pig. It's a shih tzu. If you have a shih tzu, it, I'm talking I about my dog, not yours. Yeah. So. Really? Love those dogs. What, Shih Tzu? I had one. They are yeah. very sweet. We are sweet learning dogs, some so. interesting things about you, Nixon. <laughs> 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 All right, enough about that. Uh, if you are heading out right now, it still looks like 410. I really can't tell if that's just a reflection. It, it appears as though it is still dry right now. Uh, but just be on the lookout. Is there some speckles on the uh, lens? It sure looks like it. Okay. It looked like it was. Uh, so there could be a little bit of that uh, that mist out there because uh, Mark said he ran into a little bit of mist coming into work this morning. And we do have a fair amount of rain, uh, especially down to the southeast right now. A decent, sh uh, decent shower and. Uh, right there to the east of Laredo, and that's going to be heading in toward Beeville, moving up to the northeast, and otherwise it's a lot of scattered, basically some uh, light rain. Pearsall, you're getting some rain, and this is moving in through Atascosa County, up through Wilson County, and continuing off to the northeast around Gonzales. We really haven't seen... Well, maybe a couple little spots here and there that have moved through uh, San Antonio and Bear County this morning. Other, otherwise, a little bit of mist that's too light to be showing up on uh, radar. And then off to the northwest around Bandera, Bernie going out 10, you're going to run into a few of those sprinkles. Now, if you are hitting the road this morning, if you're going up to uh, I-10 in toward the hill country or heading up 35, you may run into a couple sprinkles, but that's going to be the drier area up to the north and to the northwest and then more rain down to the south and to the uh, southeast. Temperatures are almost double of what they were at this time yesterday. We were at uh, 27 yesterday, so we're now in the uh, low 50s and 40s around the area. The humidity has also gone way up compared to yesterday. Remember, we we're in the teens and even some single digits for these dew point temperatures. So now, as expected, the humidity has come back into the picture. Computer model. It's got a lot of basically light rain and again, everything, even though there is some rain in the, the hill country and this is just, you know, not going to be constant, but just those scattered showers around the area. Uh, most of it is going to be south and east of I-35. There's a disturbance which is going to be sliding along the, uh, the coastal plain throughout the rest of today. Although we'll still have some of those scattered showers around even on into this evening and some leftover clouds tomorrow morning. Then we're going to start to clear out good looking weekend. Once again, a fantastic weekend. And cool mornings, very pleasant afternoons, just about normal with temperatures. Maybe low temperatures, a, a tad on the coolish side. Here's the disturbance, as you can see, coming in here, the uh, satellite radar loop, basically along the, the coastal plain, and that's what's moving in just uh, right across Mexico from the uh, Pacific Ocean. And as far as any really, really cold temperatures, not in this forecast, not even going into next week. Unfortunately, it's going to be kind of the opposite of what we just went through. 53 degrees today at noon. We're still going to have some scattered showers around the area and even later on this afternoon. And the other thing is temperatures really aren't going to be moving all that much, if at all. Scattered showers here and there, and it's still going to be, you know, not as cold as the past couple of mornings. That dampish cool out there because of the, the extra humidity. Mountain Cedar is on the low side right now. Adventure, I guess that that's going to remain lower. We don't have any big northerly winds anywhere in the future, but mold is probably going to be going up today, just given the fact we have some more moisture out there. Tomorrow we start off 42 degrees, get up to 63. Clouds in the morning, sunshine in the afternoon. A couple of morning clouds on Sunday. Beautiful, beautiful weekend. I mean, cool mornings, nice afternoons. And then we start to get a little bit milder, kind of jacket weather in the morning, and then we're going to be hitting 70 by Christmas Eve. Hello, hey, Nick. We just went. <laughs> yeah. Go you, ahead. You, you move pretty go, fast. Go in there and point out. <laughs> you can point for me. Tuesday, we're going to be at 70. And then Wednesday, we're also going to be at 70 <laughs> on Christmas. He almost did it. You never know when one of these cameras is going to be hot, as I we know. say. That's, that's true. We try to remember that all the time. You have to now. remember your mic? <laughs> is it my cue? Yeah, it's yeah. it's time, Nick. It's all about you now. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, hello, everyone. Uh, nice to be here. I uh, hope everyone's having a great, great Friday morning. No accidents report, so if you are, in fact, traveling for the holiday season, you probably are off to a great start because things are looking great on the roadways. It's not too slick just yet. So let's take a look at some drive times. Southbound 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes, and the southeast side of 1604 to downtown, 11 minutes. So those are very good commutes there. Taking a look outside, we still have some in construction on I-35 South and Knox Road. Uh, right there, it's the 35 and 90 interchange on the south side of town by Burbank High School. So just to keep that in mind if you're heading that way. Mark, Leslie, back to you.
Thank you, Officer Solis. Facebook's announced it'll be running its first ever Super Bowl commercial in February. The social media giant will run a 60 second ad that will feature Chris Rock and Sylvester Stallone to promote Facebook's groups feature. Super Bowl 54 airs Sunday, February 2nd. Friday is projected to be the busiest air travel day over the Christmas and New Year's holiday period. Airlines for America. American says three million people are expected to travel on major U.S. airlines as we head into the holiday week. The day that wins the title of busiest travel day of the year was the Sunday after Thanksgiving. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, just about uh, 5, 54, 51 degrees. Lottery numbers as we head to break. Pick three numbers, 262 with a fireball of 7. Daily four numbers, 9448 with a fireball of 9. Cash 5, 7, 10, 19, 24, 32. Texas two step, 12, 27, 31, 35 with a bonus ball of 18. Welcome back to GMSA. First fear, then relief. That's what some drivers experienced in eastern Alabama when they were pulled over by police this week. It wasn't because they did anything wrong. Officers in Glencoe, Alabama, just sharing the Christmas spirit. Instead of giving out tickets, they were handing out gift cards. The department says the goal was to bridge the gap between the community and law enforcement and to spread some holiday cheer. We are less than three minutes until six. We all know exercise can help you get in shape and lose weight, but what you put in your body after your workout matters just as much. So to come a workout diet you need to know about. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi putting the impeachment process on hold. I'm Inez Delacuatera in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. Outside with live cam, we've made it to Friday and it is warmer out there and definitely feeling more humid. We actually have some rain showers on radar. Mike will get you updated as we head into the last full weekend before Christmas. Live from case at 12. Good morning. San Antonio starts right now. Sorry for the <laughs> microphone <laughs> mic issues. jitters. Uh, good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is December Yay! 20th. Welcome to your Friday, everybody. Uh, not feeling like it did the last couple of days. You still need a light jacket. It's cool out there, but it's not cold. Like 20 degrees warmer this morning, Mike Osterhage? We were 27 at this time yesterday, and now we've been in the uh, low 50s. You know, if we were 54, basically double of what we were. And also, this is interesting. Now, over by the airport, we are starting to see a couple little drops on the lens. So the roads are definitely on the uh, damp side. And this is what radar is showing right now. Decent area of rain down here just to the uh, just to the east of Laredo. And all this is kind of sliding up to the northeast. or disturbance coming across Mexico. The mo the majority of all of this is going to be the majority of the rain today is going to be to the east and southeast of 35. Obviously, there's a couple of those showers out uh, in portions of the hill country. If you're doing traveling today, head off to Graham's house for Christmas. If you're going out 10, going up 35, yes, you'll still run into a couple of sprinkles, but it's going to be a little bit drier. You're going to run into most of the rain going down 35, 37 and heading east on 10 and a little bit closer in. As you can see, some of these scattered showers there in portions of the hill country. And here's the few showers that are working their way in through town. A lot of mist and drizzle as well. And these temperatures, 51 degrees here in town, 49 Randolph, 47 up the road in comfort and a lot more humidity around here and temperatures are basically going to be staying steady all day long. Obviously, it's not as cold as yesterday, but it's that dampish chill this morning. It's low low to mid 50s maybe throughout the day. Scattered showers pretty much all day long. The weekend looks fantastic. Christmas forecast is coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is the very latest from Officer Nick Solis. So I just saw rain out there by the airport. You know what that means, Mike. Especially no problems heading yet, though. No problems okay. yet, but heading six to seven. You know how it can be sometimes. Yep. Well, I hope no, there are no accidents out in the roadway, and I hope we continue to keep it all green like it is right now. Well, hello, everyone. I hope you're having a great morning. Uh, no traffic or accidents going in this, on the major highways now, so let's take a look at some drive times. Eastbound Bandera to I-10, five minutes. Westbound Bandera Road to 151, five minutes as well. Northeast side of 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes. And the southwest side of 1604 to downtown is 12 minutes as well. Things are looking great right now. However, like, my, like Mike said, it is is getting wet out there on the roadway, so please be careful. 
Please drive, no cell phone while you're driving, two hands on the steering wheel, just drive for the conditions. We want everyone who's out for the holiday driving out to their families get there safe, right? Exactly. So let's take a look at some roadways outside. US 90 Leon Creek looking great out there. Uh, let's do another one. 35 North New Braunfels is looking good as well. So right now traffic is looking light and I hope everyone has a great morning. Mark, Leslie. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, firefighters worked to put out a house fire on San Antonio's east side that was apparently started by a water heater. Happened just before 10 last night in the 800 block of Nevada Street. Everyone was able to get out of the home safely, including two dogs. Firefighters are estimating the damage to be around $5,000. The family was not able to return home last night because the utilities were not working. Happening now in San Antonio International Airport, hundreds of servicemen and women are heading home to celebrate the holidays. They're getting a break from their duty at Joint Base San Antonio. This morning, several local businesses and volunteers are actually on hand as they get ready for takeoff. They're even offering complimentary gift wrapping and snacks. So if you're heading out today, you need to expect long lines at security as the personnel make their way home for a long-deserved time off. Be sure to pack your patience. Definitely home cooking. Um, I've tried like the Mexican restaurants here, but it's nothing like my mom's food back home. <laughs> it's nothing like it. Honestly, I just want to, like, I'm craving sleep. <laughs> I really just want to sleep. Like, as soon as I get home, I will talk to everybody, like, tomorrow maybe. I just want to go home and, like, rest and not be interrupted for the rest of the day. We have more on the military exodus for the holidays on KSAT.com. Just look for this story on our homepage. And now to the courtroom where some last minute legal maneuvering brought the aggravated sexual assault trial of Alan Arandando Brayton to an abrupt end. It revealed some additional charges against him. He was found guilty on the assault charges on Wednesday and yesterday as part of a plea agreement. He was sentenced to 35 years in prison. Paul Venema takes us through the process that led to the deal. Is that your understanding of the agreement you have on sentencing? Yes, you are. As the punishment phase was beginning, Alan Arredondo's Bratton's lawyer announced that there was a plea agreement and that he'd changed his mind. He asked that the judge, rather than the jury, assess his punishment. I assess your punishment at 35 years in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. There's a $1,500 fine. I'm going to make an affirmative finding that there is a deadly weapon used in the commission of the offense. <laughs> that deadly weapon was a pistol that Brayton waved in her face as he sexually assaulted his 25-year-old girlfriend on December 4th, 2017, an assault that he recorded on his cell phone. It was the centerpiece of the state's case, and it also provided evidence of more than just the attack. His cell phone contained 32 images of child pornography. Those charges were dismissed as part of the plea deal, but included in Brayton's sentence. As he left the courtroom, Brayton gestured to his family and smiled. Before prosecutors accepted that plea deal, they discussed it with the victim. She agreed and they went forward. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. Other stories we're following for you here in San Antonio on GMSA. A man ended up in handcuffs after police say he was involved in a series of local robberies. Police have arrested Nathaniel Talley at an apartment complex on the northwest side. That arrest happening late yesterday. Police say when they attempted to arrest him, he took off on foot. He's being charged right now with two counts of aggravated robbery, evading arrest and unlawful carrying of a weapon. Police say they are investigating whether other suspects were involved in these robberies, which took place between December 10th and 11th. Well, right now, police are still searching for the suspect behind a drive-by shooting on the city's south side. It happened at the home off Oriental Avenue just before 8 last night. When police arrived, they found a 27-year-old man shot in the hand and a dead dog. Police say around 10 to 15 shots were fired at the home. They believe it was a targeted shooting, and they're still working to identify the shooter's vehicle. 607, top of your morning headlines. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi putting the impeachment process on hold by threatening to possibly delay President Donald Trump's Senate trial. The president and his allies are accusing Pelosi of playing games. Here's ABC's Ines de la Quatera in Washington. History put on hold. President Trump becoming just the third president in U.S. history to be impeached. But House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is now refusing to take the next steps, saying she won't send articles of impeachment over to the Senate until Majority Leader Mitch McConnell reveals what the president's trial will look like. Our founders, when they wrote the Constitution, uh, they suspected that there could be a rogue president. 
I don't think they suspected that we could have a rogue president and a rogue leader in the Senate at the same time. Democrats have been pushing to hear from four witnesses the White House had blocked from testifying, including acting chief of staff Mick Mulvaney and former national security advisor John Bolton. The issue coming up at last night's Democratic debate. If President Trump thinks that he should not be impeached, he should be not scared to put forward his own witnesses. But McConnell has already rejected that request, indicating he wants a speedy trial and that he's working in total coordination with the White House. Democrats are hoping threatening to possibly delay Trump's trial will give them leverage. But for now, at least, Republicans aren't biting. It looks like the prosecutors are getting cold feet in front of the entire country and second guessing whether they even want to go to trial. President Trump responding on Twitter, writing Pelosi is afraid to present impeachment to the Senate and adding, so after Democrats gave me no due process in the House, no lawyers, no witnesses, no nothing, they now want to tell the Senate how to run their trial. We think that what they did is unconstitutional. Lawmakers were hoping to have the Senate trial begin the week of January 6th, but that will all depend on Speaker Pelosi. And as Delacuatera, ABC News, Washington. Time right now, 6.09, we're at 50 degrees. Still to come, the latest on Pat Sajak after his recent health scare. And that's coming up in your GMA First Look. And after the break, a look at some of the top local videos that went viral in 2019. And right now, taking a look outside with live cam. You can see the droplets on the camera. An indication it's a little bit wet out there, so please be careful. 613, of course, 2019 coming to a close, and we're looking back at some top viral videos of the year. Eric Hernandez joins us with three viral videos. I look forward to this every Friday. What do we have this week? I know, and we put this kind of list together of viral videos that came from San Antonio. So oh. there's been some really interesting stuff the past year. Now, the first story is not necessarily it didn't happen in San Antonio, but somebody from San Antonio did it, the Blue Bell Liquor. Do you remember oh, this this yes. summer? I yes. Mm -hmm. She opened up the mm -hmm. carton of Blue Bell, oh, yeah. Yeah. licked it, and, and like, then... Uh, when you said liquor, I'm thinking, uh, I can't eat over. I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, Why I like, Yeah. And then she put it back on the shelf. Remember, it was that big debacle yep. over the summer of trying to find the carton, trying to find who she was. This took actually place at a Walmart in Lufkin, but she was mm -hmm. from here in San Antonio. And I I think they ended up charging her with something. At, at yeah, she, she got, she got in trouble, in trouble, yeah. trouble for it. It's still gross. cringeworthy watching. Yeah, and then there was a lot of copycats after that. Remember yeah, that? And it was just too of, much. Oh yeah. 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 So back here at home, oh, another story that came out of the summer um, was the dam failure at Lake Dunlop, mm -hmm. and we have yeah. that video of the moment where it actually did collapse. It in, was such a tranquil we, day. Was it during our nine o'clock? It was. was that morning? Yeah. yeah. We started hearing rumors that it had happened and by and the end of the day, we had saw that video. video and mm -hmm. it, it went, you know, was for the, I think that entire week that video was just trending for us. Um, I think it's that it made the, the lake drop nearly seven feet in a matter of like a minute or so, it yeah, it's seconds maybe. There was nothing to indicate it was gonna happen. Happen. It just mm -hmm. happened. Yeah, and then it, there was a whole fallout after that. We're closing all the area, like and the lawsuits, and, and it's still a problem now. Possible oh, yes. agreement, yeah. and yeah, that, that river has changed, or that part of the, the Guadalupe has changed for the foreseeable future. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and it, I think a lot of sections of it are still closed. And the last one I have you, for you guys right now um, is a kid from Reagan kind of got a lot of national attention for just saying good morning. The good morning, y'all kid. Um, he would go good morning, good morning, morning, every morning. He was recorded saying good morning, y'all. And I don't for remember this one. I know, I some reason. Good morning, y'all. Good morning, y'all. Good morning, well, he's consistent. <laughs> Every morning, it, he was recorded by his friend saying, uh, good morning. I mean, it, it went national, this this, hmm. this video. And it's he's actually funny. Uh, Reagan High School student, Nicholas uh, Cuadra, and uh, now a viral sensation for that video, what, just we, saying good great, morning. All and his college application letters, if he'd put on there, morning, y'all. Good morning, y'all. Mm -hmm. Well, it's That's great awesome. that he gets the notoriety just for saying good, good morning. Good morning, yeah. exactly. And he's um, so happy. It's uh -huh. a very genuine good morning. And so that was, I think, recorded within a year span, so it was just every morning. A different Later. good morning. Um, next half hour, we'll have some of the three top stories of the. That's the kind of thing Great. that should become have copycats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not blue pill yeah. liquors. All right, Erica, let's thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Next half hour, let's check on the roadways, Nick.
Well, Mark Leslie, you know I'm going to say it. Good morning, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, right now traffic's looking great. Uh, the roadways are looking good. No major accidents right now, which is a good sign for 6 a.m. on a Friday morning. However, the weather is starting to pick up out there. So everyone, please be careful. Roadways are slick and you need to be careful while driving to work. Uh, let's take a look at some drive times. Eastbound Bandera to I-10, five minutes. Westbound Bandera to 151 is also five minutes. Uh, northeast side of uh, 1604 to downtown 13 minutes and the southwest side of 1604 to downtown is 12 minutes as well. Let's take a look at the trans guide right here. You can see that it's very visibility from this camera is very, very tough. I guess that's all the rain um, that's starting to come down or the, the mist. So just be careful. Visibility is very low right now. 35 in New Braunfels traffic is starting to pick up. Uh, this looks like US 90 and 36. It is also starting to pick up. So uh, traffic all around the city is uh, starting to get heavy, which is normal. Just be careful if you are heading to work or and, to family. And, and things have slowly been deteriorating mm -hmm. throughout the morning show today. Very quickly, back to the ice cream mm -hmm. liquor. One time, years and years ago, I was at, I think it was like a media event or something. You know how sometimes they have refreshments there? Mm -hmm. and, and the person I was standing with, we were watching somebody going through the line, and they took a chip and went, oh, my God, they're going to dip. And they just went like that and dipped it in, instead of putting some on their plate, mm -hmm. took a bite. Oh God, they're gonna double dip. And this was something, and they went and double dipped huh. on a, like a little buffet. I mean, it's one thing to do it once, <laughs> right. but if you're double dipping, you're really no, out of I control. Mean, <laughs> yeah, so, anyway, uh, yes, things have definitely started to deteriorate. Take a look at uh, live cam right now by the airport. And we do have a lot of, I mean, it's not like raindrops. It's not really coming down all that much, but it's just enough moisture. And since we haven't had a heck of a lot, Enough to uh, get the wipers going there. Since we haven't had a, a heck of a lot of rain lately, there's all the oil, there's dust on the road, so that's going to make things very slippery out there. A lot of rain down to the uh, south. Actually, some moderate to even a couple of decent uh, downpours there just to the east of Laredo. This is going to be sliding up to the northeast, so folks around Beeville, Victoria, uh, maybe even in toward Carnes County, you may be seeing some of these uh, decent showers in the next couple of hours as that continues to work its way off to the east. And this and the southeast, the coastal plain is going to be where the majority of the rain falls today. Obviously, there is some out in portions of the hill country and further up to the north, but basically east of I-35, south and east of I-35 is where the majority of the rain is going to be. Obviously, around town, not a lot being picked up on radar as of right now. Just those few little specks that are going through there, and most of it is probably a lot of mist and drizzle, which is too light to be picked up on radar, and some of that in the uh, hill country as well, sort of off and on. And we're going to see showers scattered about off and on. It's not going to rain constantly, although we'll have more constant rain down to the uh, southeast throughout the rest of the day as well as tonight. 50 here in town, so a little bit of a uh, couple of sprinkles has cooled things down just a, a degree in the past hour. 47 Comfort, 52 in Castroville, and these temperatures are nearly double of what they were at this time yesterday. We did, of course, get down to 27 degrees yesterday, and the humidity has come back up. Think back to yesterday when these numbers, the dew points were down in the low 20s, teens, and even we had some single digit numbers out in portions of the hill country. So again, we're going to have scattered rain throughout the rest of uh, the morning hours, and again, even though there's some out there in the hill country, the majority of it is to the southeast, and that will be the situation pretty much all day long and then on into tonight. Again, not raining constantly, but just scattered about. And temperatures really aren't going to be going anywhere throughout the day. And then we're going to be clearing out nicely tomorrow. 53 degrees at noon. We stay in the low 50s, maybe mid 50s all day long. Basically, temperatures for all intents and purposes aren't going to be moving throughout the day. And we'll have scattered showers off and on throughout the day. Mountain Cedar is low. That was yesterday's count. And it dropped down significantly from the previous day's reading. when It was up to about uh, 3,000 or so. Mold. I would venture a guess would be going up given the fact we have obviously some more moisture out there. Morning clouds will keep a couple of showers, especially off to the east, even in the overnight hours and some morning clouds uh, showers off to the east tomorrow. 42 degrees, then up to 63 with more sunshine in the afternoon. A good looking weekend. I mean, winter officially begins tomorrow night uh, just after 10 o'clock. Of course, Hanukkah begins at sundown on Sunday, 66 degrees. Yeah, our streak of beautiful weekends continues and at or a little bit above normal temperatures Monday, and then we get up to 70 Christmas Eve through Christmas, and on Thursday, maybe a shower or two by Thursday. Okay, thank you very much, Mike. Just about 621, 50 degrees. Just to have new details about bias and facial recognition software. That's coming up in your consumer news.
Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. Diarrhea? Pepto Diarrhea to the rescue. It's three times concentrated liquid formula coats and kills bacteria to relieve diarrhea. The leading competitor only treats symptoms. It does nothing to kill the bacteria. Treat diarrhea at its source with Pepto Diarrhea. If you live with diabetes, why finger stick when you can scan? With the Freestyle Libre 14-day system, just scan the sensor with your reader, iPhone, or Android and manage your diabetes. With the Freestyle Libre 14-day system, a continuous glucose monitor, you can check your glucose levels anytime without finger sticks. Ask your doctor to write a prescription for the Freestyle Libre 14-day system. You can do it without finger sticks. Learn more at freestylelibre.us. With Advil, you have power over pain, so the whole world looks different. The unbeatable strength of Advil. What pain? I'm Paula Ferris in Orlando for Good Morning America, and I just wrapped up an exclusive interview with Pat Sajak, the beloved TV game show host. He talks about his recent health scare, that emergency surgery, what's next for him health-wise, and Vanna filling in for him on Wheel of Fortune. Here's your GMA first look. You said they had to operate right away. Was it life or death at that moment? Well, they tell, I mean, my blood pressure had, had fallen dramatically. They had to wait till it, till it lifted a bit so they could do the surgery. Uh, yeah, I mean, no one knew. It was tough on the, uh, Leslie, my, my, my wife and, and our daughter was with me and they were, you know, they didn't know. I mean, you go in and they don't know if I'm coming out. It's intense, uh, it's debilitating, I mean, you can't move. And coming up at seven, we'll have more of our exclusive interview with Pat Sajak and what's next for Wheel of Fortune. With your GMA First Look, I'm Paula Ferris in Orlando. Research are saying there may be racial bias in facial recognition software. They say the most popular algorithms misidentify more minorities. Researchers think the bias may be related to the images used to train the software. A massive data breach left millions of Facebook users' data exposed online. Names, IDs, and phone numbers, other sensitive information as well, available without a password. More than 257 million people may have been impacted. Facebook says it is looking into the issue. U.S. Senate has given final approval to a bill designed to curb there's annoying robocalls. It's called the TRACED Act, and it requires phone companies to authenticate calls to determine if the numbers calling are actually real. Also clears the way for regulators to penalize scammers more aggressively. When it comes to physical activity, doctors recommend getting at least 30 minutes of physical activity or more a day if you're looking to lose weight. But what are the right foods to eat? Devin Clark breaks it down for us. Running, lifting, swimming, riding your bike, they will all help you get in shape and lose weight. But what you put into your body after your workout can be just as important as the workout itself. First is when to eat. It's recommended that you eat within 45 minutes of your workout, but try to eat no later than two hours, as this may lower rates of glycogen synthesis up to 50%, and this can cause extreme fatigue. Next is what to eat. If you get your workout done in the morning, then follow it up with a breakfast of an egg omelet with avocado spread on toast, oatmeal, or Greek yogurt with berries and granola. One study showed nutrients in the yolk help to stimulate muscle growth. Saving your workout for later in the day, grilled chicken and roasted vegetables, tuna and crackers, or a simple protein shake with bananas can improve your body's progress. Bottom line, make sure you have protein, carbs, and water. You should ingest 0.14 to 0.23 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Carbs will help restore glycogen levels, while water will help performance and keep the body hydrated. And don't be afraid to consume fats. Even though they might slow down the absorption of your meal, it will not take away from the benefits. In fact, a study found whole milk promoted muscle growth more than skim milk. For GMSA, I'm Devin Clark. Your time now, 627, 50 degrees out by. Next half hour, recap of last night's Democratic debate. We're taking a look at some of the most talked about moments.
631. Let's take a look outside with Transguide, and you really can't tell in some of these cameras, but others you can. We've got from we've gone from eh to ugh as far <laughs> as uh, wet roads. Uh, we'll take a closer look with Officer Nick Slees in a moment. And taking a look outside with live cam. I bet we're not going to have as pretty of a sunrise today as we have the last couple of days. And you don't need the heavy coat today. A light jacket will do, but maybe need an umbrella. That's good news on our Friday. It is December 20th. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for being with us. How are the roadways shaping up? Accident-wise, they're really good. There's nothing on the major roadways, so that's always good. But the roads are getting wet, so people need to be careful driving out there. Yeah. So the question for my ghost trade right now is, where is the rain, and how long could this last? Is kind of an off and on all day thing, I'll answer perhaps? the first one, the, the last one first, uh, all day long. Okay. Off and on, most of the rain is going to be uh, south and east. And actually, we've got some decent rain down there right now, and it's sort of uh, just kind of scattered about here in town. And there's really not actually that much showing up on radar. but. It's that mist and drizzly kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. I'll show you live cam in just a second. Temperatures have stayed right around upper 40s, 50s, almost double of where we were at this time yesterday when we got down to 27 degrees. A couple of showers out there. And then later on this afternoon, again, Temperatures aren't going to move that much, and even though, like you said, not a heavy coat, but it's that sort of damp. Yeah, chill, it, that, that, you'll need a jacket. That moist air that gets down the back Let's of your do neck. This. And uh, yeah, mid 50s today. Do what? Everybody's kind of, when we, we think about that, we talk like about it, we're all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you can kind of feel it. It gets, yeah. you know, makes, yeah. So Absolutely. anyway, here's what it looks like on live cam right now over there by the airport. And there are a couple little, uh, well, drizzly specks, not really any big raindrops or anything like that on the lens, but this is enough just to really sort of. Make your morning not good. And as you can see the reflection off the uh, road there on 410. So the roads, like Enjoy. Eric was saying, are definitely damp. And so therefore, they're going to be on the slick side because it's not really enough rain to wash all the dirt and oil and everything off the roads. Down to the uh, south, we've got some decent rain, some uh, pretty good showers and even some heavier downpours, a couple of those just to the east of Laredo, and this is going to continue to work its way. So Beeville, you are in line for this. A lot of that to around Live Oak County. Uh, some uh, good showers, uh, say, around Frio County, moving across 35, as well as Atascosa County. And here in town, it's basically just a lot of light stuff. But we do have uh, this little spot right there moving in toward Von Orme. That's going to work its way up 35. And then a couple of more of those showers on the uh, northwest side of town. That's what's being picked up on radar. But again, a lot of this is just too light. It's that mist and drizzly type stuff out there. Again, temperatures, everybody's in the uh, kind of mid upper 40s to mid 50s and thermometers aren't not aren't not are not going to move. <laughs> they aren't not either going to move uh, throughout the rest of the day. So we got the kind of wet and yucky sort of a day today, but the weekend looks fantastic. We'll check out Christmas coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. All right, so the roads are damp. You haven't seen anything, any big problems yet? No, the, the roads are light. The traffic's light, too. I was thinking, Mike, maybe everyone decided to take a three-day weekend this week. That's why traffic's a little bit lighter. You never know. Three and... And uh, two or is yeah. counting next week as well. Five days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking that's why, because uh, there's not a lot of traffic out there. Uh, things seem to very, be very, very light. Uh, no accidents on the major roadways, but it is getting slick. So I just ask that you be very careful while you're driving to work or to your to your holiday destination, because it is very wet and very dangerous on the roadway right now. Let's take a look at some drive times. Helotus area to Randolph Air Force Base, 30 minutes. Randolph Air Force Base to Helotus, 28 minutes. That's pretty good right there. Not too bad for that area. Taking a look outside, 281 and Hildebrand's looking great. 1604 in Babcock. Uh, visibility is getting a little tough there, but you can see those lights. It's pick traffic is starting to pick up and 10 and 1604 is also getting a little backed up there. So expect a delay if you're in the northwest side of town. Leslie. 635 happening today. Hundreds of military men and women up bright and early this Friday morning making their way home for the holidays. It's a happy day. They're getting a break from their duty at Joint Base San Antonio. Several local businesses and volunteers are on hand this morning as they get ready for takeoff. They're even offering complimentary gift wrapping and snacks. So if you're traveling today, you need to expect some long lines at security as the personnel make their way home for the holidays. Some much deserved time off. We talked to some of them about what they're most excited about. I am beyond excited. Like I haven't seen them in so long. Um, and just to, not just to get to see family again, but just to see like environment that we grew up in and like friends as well and stuff. So it's like a refresher. You can read more about the exodus at the airports on KSAT.com. 
Other stories we're following for you this morning, the sixth Democratic debate of the election season and the final one of 2019. Just seven candidates took to the stage in Los Angeles Thursday night, hoping to make the biggest impression heading into 2020. Fresh off the heels of President Trump's impeachment in the House, there were no shortage of hot topics. CNN's Whitney Wild reports on the showdown in the City of Angels. Biden era. The smallest group of Democratic presidential hopefuls sharing the spotlight for the final time this year. Seven candidates gathering in Los Angeles for the PBS NewsHour Politico debate one day after the House voted to impeach President Donald Trump. We need to restore the integrity of the presidency. The president is not king in America. The focus turning from the man they want to beat in November to the candidates themselves, many seeking to clarify their positions and personal character, hoping to make waves heading into the final weeks before the Iowa caucuses. I'd also be the youngest woman ever inaugurated. <laughs> On issue after issue, we've got to break out of the Washington mindset. Putting attention on the lack of diversity on stage and highlighting the candidates of color who did not qualify for the debate. It's both an honor and disappointment to be the lone candidate of color on the stage tonight. I miss Kamala, I miss Corey, though I think Corey will be back. The candidates tackling topics like the economy, trade, health care, and climate change. Get back into the International Climate Change Agreement. I will do that on day one. We need an economy that works for working families, not just the 1%. Recent tensions brewing between Senator Elizabeth Warren and Mayor Pete Buttigieg over high dollar campaign donations boiling over on the stage. The mayor just recently had a fundraiser that was held in a wine cave. According to Forbes magazine, I am the literally the only person on this stage who's not a millionaire or a billionaire. This is the problem with issuing purity tests you cannot yourself pass. In Los Angeles, I'm Whitney Wild reporting. In the day ahead, President Donald Trump is expected to sign the spending package before heading to Palm Beach, Florida for winter vacation. Passing the $1.4 trillion spending package will avoid a possible government shutdown. Included in the package, funding for the southern border fence, new social programs, and raising the cigarette purchase age to 21. Now to sports news, and it was a W for our San Antonio Spurs. Beat the Brooklyn Nets last night at the AT&T Center. Final score, 118-105. Patty Mills had 27 points. Most of his points came in the second half when it mattered the most. LaMarcus Aldridge added 20 points and 10 rebounds. Brooklyn down three players, including star point guard Kyrie Irving. In the end, the Silver and Black take this one. Now the Spurs are in 10th place in the Western Conference. A mindset thing, you know, for me, trying to um, just be aggressive and, and, and being in that attack mode, I think. I think it, it can take pressure off, you know, uh, LaMarcus and, and, uh, and DeMar. So, um, you know, I do play with a lot of emotion, a lot of uh, positive vibes. So um, it, it comes out of me from time to time. So the force was with the Spurs during Star Wars game last night at the yes. uh, AT&T Center. Spurs back home tomorrow night. They are hosting uh, the Los Angeles Clippers. That game is set for 730. Just about 640 on your Friday morning, 50 degrees. Just ahead, we're talking about the new Star Wars, what the critics think, and what some of the diehard fans here in our newsroom have to say about it. Doesn't live up to all the hype. We're going to break it down for you. Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Broadway Bank. Hi, I'm Rachel Spice from Broadway Bank in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, from my family to yours, I'd like to wish you all uh, in the armed forces a happy holidays. Uh, we appreciate you. We're very thankful um, and we wish you a safe return. Thank you. 643 earlier in the newscast, we showed you three viral videos that had San Antonio talking this past year. Eric Hernandez returns again with three more local oh, videos. Hi, okay. oh, okay. Where this viral. way? Mm -hmm. We're at. Right, here okay. we go. Okay, yeah. right here. here. Right. Awesome. So uh, let's start right away with the Highway 90 collapse. Remember, it started off as a small little hole oh, yeah, 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 and then yeah. ended up into that. Yeah, yes. yeah and that had the road uh, there at Highway 90 and Hunt Lane closed down for several days as um, a deep hole in the road formed that was caused by a sewer main collapse. Sky 12 got this video as it was being repaired and it was closed down for I think almost a week before they were able to finally open it again. But yeah, that started out as a small problem. It ended up <laughs> into a huge problem. problem. Yeah, and the guys in that video stand around and they're kind of <laughs> like scratching this is, their heads like, how, how are we going to fill well, this did in? You, did you see the arm of that excavator, how deep that it, thing was? It was, yeah, yeah, it was a huge deal. Um, another huge deal was a mixer truck that ended up spilling cement all over the roadway yes. and a vehicle.
Oh, a brand new vehicle brand at that. New one. Oh, that's just. And the guy never stopped. Like he, he had no idea. He had no way. idea that was going on. And I don't think to this day that they ever did find um, who that driver really? was. At least we haven't heard. We haven't gotten an update on that. Okay. Um, but that story was it did crazy online mm -hmm. here in San Antonio. That but not as much as this next one. Okay. The zebra escaping in New Braunfels. Uh oh, that's oh, right. Yeah. yeah. The oh, zebras. I remember that. Two zebras escaped from a private property in New Braunfels, and um, one of them was just roaming the streets, you know, running for police. And then that also the video of it being, once it was caught, being flown into where it was supposed to go. Mm -hmm. Sadly, both the zebras did end up dying after this incident because I guess the trauma of it all mm -hmm. so much. But that's, that story trended for, I think, a month and just those videos did really well. Oh, yeah. I mean, Nashville was amazing. Yeah, and it was just not everything, you know, something you see every day, especially when you get that call, like, there's zebras on the loose in your you Braunfels. Right? You're like, what? Yeah. Zebra? Huh? Yeah. yeah, cattle, yes. Zebras, not so, not so much. much. Yeah, I was like, where do they get to, do they, I thought at first it was from like the little safari right. mm -hmm. ranch they have there in yeah, Braunfels. The wildlife. Yeah, the wildlife will like drive through, but nope, it was private property and it's kind of sad that they passed away. No, we're sad. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks, Erica. Thanks, guys. RKSAT.com. Yes. What's happening on the roadways, Nick? Not much today, Leslie, but the roads are getting slick out there. So just everyone be very, very careful. Uh, starting to see a lot of low visibility in some areas, and it's getting very slick. No major accidents, so that's always good news, especially on a Friday morning. Drive time, southbound 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes. Southeast side of 1604 to downtown is 12 minutes as well. Helotus area to Randolph, 32 minutes, and Randolph back to Helotus is 30 minutes. Let's take a look outside at the Trans Guide. 90 and 36 looking good. 90 and Leon Creek traffic is very light. That's one thing. Traffic is a little bit lighter out there today, maybe because it is going into a holiday, but it is looking good. 1604 in Babcock, northwest side. You can always count for traffic to be backed up on a Friday at 630 there. Uh, let's see. 10 in Callahan looking very good. And uh, 10 in Frio inbounds and outbounds is looking moderate. Not, the, not too heavy, not too light, just a little moderate. So that's good news for everyone out there. And just be careful on those slick roadways. Yes, sir. Yeah, it looks as though all of the uh, the roads are pretty much damp now. You're getting a little slick everywhere. Yeah, it's dangerous. Be, be careful. careful. Yep, and this is the way it's going to be staying throughout the rest of the morning and the rest of today. We'll okay. have rain off and on. So uh, the other thing is, uh, once the roads get damp, they're not going to be dry. Well, the you know traffic is going to dry them a little bit, but uh, we're not going to have any sunshine to help evaporate any of that moisture out there. And this is what it looks like a live cam over by the airport. Obviously, 410 is on the uh, slick side, and we've got the drops on the lens there. And here comes some of the now well, the rain, pretty good rain down around uh, Laredo and then heading in toward Beeville as of right now. Live Oak County, uh, LaSalle, McMullen County, some uh, some decent rain as well as just to the south of Pearsall, some moderate showers there. Most everything is sliding basically to the northeast and we've got the disturbance coming across uh, Mexico and most of the rain, obviously there is some on the other side of 35, but most of the rain today and tonight is going to be south and east of I-35. Obviously, there's some uh, well, decent showers coming in on, speaking of 35, right there in Von Orme, and that's going to be working its way in toward town. And then also on the uh, northwest side, we've got some of those uh, just light little showers, and that's what we saw that 1604 camera out there on the uh, northwest side on Trans Guide. And even though in downtown there's nothing showing up or by the airport, obviously it's a lot of uh, some mist and drizzle. So that's what's making the roads damp. So again, just assume that as of now or throughout the rest of the morning, the roads are going to be on the damp side. And if you are heading on out doing some traveling now, if you go up 35 far enough, we're going to be kind of getting out of this, if you will. And same thing going out 10 and toward the hill country. The majority of the rain, as I mentioned, is going to be south and east. Temperatures, uh, we've been kind of fluctuating between 50, 51 degrees this morning. And we're not going to move all that much throughout the day, maybe mid 50s later on this afternoon. Obviously, there's a lot more humidity. You know, you think about these numbers, the dew points yesterday in parts of the hill country were actually down in single digits, which was just bone dry air. But of course, humidity is expected has come back into the picture. And we are going to keep some showers around throughout the rest of today. It won't be raining constantly. I mean, we'll have a little bit more constant rain down to the southeast, and it's going to be kind of the scattered variety, but pretty much all day, all evening long as well and some leftover clouds, perhaps even a couple of showers off to the southeast tomorrow morning, and then we're going to continue to uh, clear on out. And as far as the humidity, southeasterly wind continues to pull in, more humidity, dew points go up, and then we have a little bit of a, well, 
call it a front. Technically um, it will keep temperatures. We're actually going to be warmer tomorrow just because we'll have some sunshine, but it's going to be drying things out kind of a little bit of a Pacific front. So that's going to scour the uh, humidity out of here by the afternoon tomorrow. And that's going to be the situation into Sunday, which is setting us up for great weather because we'll have some cool mornings and very pleasant afternoons. A uh, big picture of things. You know, a couple of days ago, it was about 23 below in International Falls. Now it's at 18. And so it, most of the country now, I and mean, we do still have a lot of freezing temperatures there, but nowhere near as cold as what it was. So the cold, cold air is continuing to go back up there into Canada. And for the most part, it's going to be staying up there, at least as far as we're concerned, even going into next week. 53 degrees today at noon and a couple of scattered showers around primarily off to the east and southeast and 55 for high temperature. And basically what you can take away from the forecast is temperatures aren't going to move that much if at all today. And we'll have those off and on showers throughout the day. Mountain cedars on the low side mold. Once the updated numbers come out and well, probably about 15, 20 minutes, probably going to be going up. I would venture a guess. Tomorrow we start off 42 degrees and we're going to have some clouds around in the morning and then 63 in the afternoon. So a beautiful day will continue to clear out throughout the day. Winter begins tomorrow night just after 10 o'clock and great looking nice first full day of winter on Sunday 37 up to uh, 66 and then going into Christmas. We're going to have kind of warm temperatures and a lot of clouds 70 for a high. Thank you, Mike. Wow. Movie theater is going to be packed this weekend. Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker caps off the trio of trilogies set in a galaxy far, far away. Industry analysts are predicting an opening weekend of 175 to $200 million. Here's a look at how it's doing right now on RottenTomatoes.com. Critics are split. It's rotten with 58%, but fans seem to be loving it. It has 86% from audiences. Several folks on GMSA didn't get much sleep last night because they had to see this film. Photographer Tim Stewart said, as a lifelong Star Wars fan, all 42 years of it, I went into The Rise of Skywalker thinking, I have a bad feeling about this. How were they going to tie all three trilogies together? How were they going to work around the absence of Carrie Fisher? I have to say, I think it's the best of the latest group of films. Mm. I was surprised at times that I did not expect to be. I both laughed and wept. I can't wait to see this one again. Four and a half out of five stars. All right, our producer Joy can't stop talking about this movie. She said, ignore the critics. If you're a true Star Wars fan, you are going to love this movie. So many big questions were answered, along with ones you didn't even know you had to ask. It was the perfect ending to the Skywalker saga. I don't say this often, but I loved every second of the movie, and I give it a 4.9 out of 5 stars. That's pretty good. You know, some of the latest Star Wars movies, the critics have been, eh, but that... In this case, it doesn't matter. If you're a Star Wars fan, you're gonna you're gonna love these movies. But mm -hmm. interested to see that uh, Tim said this was the best of the last three. Of the three. Last one. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. There you go. Six fifty two fifty degrees tomorrow on GMSA. Some last minute gift options for the hard to buy person in your life. Good morning, everyone. Officer Solis here, currently 6.55 a.m. We have this accident here. It's 10300 Shanefield Road. Now, I put this up here because Shanefield Road gets very backed up when you're trying to get onto 1604. So if you want some alternate routes, try to go Braun uh, or try to go 1560. Take a right on Braun, go down, and then take a left to get back on 1604 because it can get backed up there. Let's take a look at some uh, trans guide now. Uh, let's see. And uh, taking a look there at some trans guide. We got this accident here and uh, right here. So we have a 35 and 1604. It's looking pretty good right now. Traffic's building up, but visibility is hard. It is damp and murky out there. This is what it looks like over there. Live cam by the airport. Uh, roads are definitely damp and we've got some uh, decent rain down to the south and that's going to be working its way along the coastal plain. Scattered showers pretty much all day long. We've got more of this rain now moving in through town. So if you are heading off to work, school or hitting the road, it's not that cold, kind of a damp cool and we're going to stay steady all day long. Scattered rain. All right, thanks. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas if you're heading out this weekend. We'll hopefully see you in 2020.